White lesions of the oral mucosa may be keratinized or non-keratinized. Non-keratotic lesions or mildly keratotic lesions may represent physiological variations or damage to the epithelium and lamina propria. Some of the physiological variations are leukoedema, which corresponds to a tissue edema, principally in the cheeks, linea alba, which follows the line of the smile, coated tongue, which consists of a coating on the dorsal surface of the tongue, Fordyce granules, which represent ectopic sebaceous glands, and sclerosis, most commonly secondary to laser treatment of the oral mucosa. Alongside the physiological variations, there are pathologies, in particular pseudomembranous lesions arising from candidiasis or thrush, which accumulate on the superficial mucosa. When the pseudomembrane is removed, an extremely erythematous mucosa can be observed. In the case of acute candidiasis associated with a prosthesis, the candidiasis will spread beyond the prosthesis, which distinguishes it from the simple denture stomatitis due to trauma. Candidiasis of the oral cavity results from an imbalance between the ecosystem and the general state of health. It is characterized by the proliferation of yeasts, which transform into filaments, which signals a candidal infection. First line treatment for acute candidiasis of the oral cavity is based on the use of local amphotericin B in the form of a mouthwash three times a day for a fortnight. In addition, an antiseptic treatment with povidone iodine may be prescribed as well as fluconazole if there are difficulties treating with local amphotericin B. In all cases, it is recommended that the mucosa be cleansed with gauze and that the prostheses be cleaned, particularly the denture impression surface. Another pseudomembranous lesion of the oral mucosa, burns. Burns produce a blister, which manifests as a pseudomembrane covering the lesion when the liquid is drained. In this instance, it involved a patient with cellulitis who used acetyl salicylic acid tablets to ease the pain. Therefore, here there is an iatrogenic effect caused by misuse of the drug. Localised erythemopultaceous gingivitis may be due to excessive cellular desquamation. Here, in the case of a graft versus host disease, the differential diagnosis of acute candidiasis must be proposed. Diffuse erythemopultaceous gingivitis is observed principally in erythema multiform and Stevens-Johnson syndrome. In erythema multiform, there will be a cutaneous target lesion which will enable the diagnosis to be made. Morsicatio bucarum produces a white coloration of the mucosa due to numerous squams where tissue laceration is located particularly in the epithelium with an associated erythema. Questioning the patient will allow the biting behaviour to be confirmed. The lesions are generally bilateral. Pemphigus is an autoimmune disease characterised by the production of antibodies which act against epithelial cell junctional proteins. There is an intraepithelial bulla which manifests as an erosion. The mucosa next to the erosion is slightly detached which gives it a whitish colour. White sponge nevus corresponds to an abnormality of certain cytokeratins. It manifests as severe intracellular edema and a bilateral white coloration of the mucosa. Oral hairy leukoplakia is an infectious manifestation caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. Cells appear edematous and clear on histological examination. 
Clinically, there is a white coloration. Generally, on the border of the tongue, this is bilateral. Oral hairy leukoplakia is observed principally during HIV infection, but long-term local anti-inflammatory treatments may also be responsible for this type of lesion, actinic elastosis. The production of elastosis due to excessive exposure to the sun may manifest as a white coloration of the mucosa in the case of actinic caelitis.